you worked in a million things, but infinite chess is one of them. Uh, somebody asked on uh, math overflow, the mathematical definition of a chess. Right. So can we talk about the math of chess and the math of infinite chess? What is infinite chess? Oh yeah, absolutely. Infinite chess is fantastic. Chess ordinarily is played on this tiny, tiny board, this eight by eight board, mm -hmm. right? So when you play chess, normally it's on the eight by eight board, but we want to play infinite chess. So on the, on the integer board, it's infinite in all four directions, you know, but it still has the chessboard pattern. And maybe there's pieces on this board, maybe infinitely many pieces we allow. But one difference from finite ordinary chess, in, in infinite chess, we don't play from a standard starting position. Rather, you, the interesting situation is that you present a position where there's a lot of pieces already on the board in a complicated way. And you say, what would it be like to start from this position or from that one? You know, And we want to produce positions that have interesting features, meaning mathematically interesting features. And so I can tell you, uh, for example, probably a lot of people are familiar with the um, say the made in two genre of chess problem. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a chess problem and it's white to made in two, which means that white is going to make two moves, but the second move is going to be a checkmate. Mm -hmm. Or maybe made in three or made in five or whatever. We can have made in N positions for any N. I mean, in infinite chess, you can create a position which is not made in N for any N, but white has a winning strategy that will win infinitely many moves. So in other words, mm -hmm. let me say it again. There are positions in infinite chess that white can definitely win. Infinitely many moves, white is going to make checkmate. But there's no particular N for which white can guarantee to win in N moves. There's no N. No N. So it's not made an end for any end, but it's a white win, infinitely many. The way to think about it is white is going to win, but black controls how long it takes. Ah, got it. But it's doomed. Black can say, well, I know you're going to win, but this time it's gonna, you're going to take a thousand moves at least. Mm -hmm. and, or maybe in a different way of playing, black can say, well, I know you're going to win, but this time you're going to have to take a million moves. For any number, black can say that. So it's these really interesting positions there's a position in my first infinite chess paper. So it's black to play in this position. And if black doesn't move that that rook there, then white is going to checkmate pretty quickly. By the way, can we describe the rules of infinite chess? Right. So the rules of infinite chess are that there's just the ordinary pieces and they move on this infinite board, which is just a chess board, but extended in all directions mm -hmm. infinitely with no edge. So there's no boundary. But the pieces move just like you'd expect. So the the knights move just the same, and the rooks move, you know, on the ranks and files, and the bishops move on the same color diagonals, and just like you would expect, except they can move as far as they want, you know, if there's no intervening piece in the way. Um, the one thing is that, okay, so the white pawns always move upwards, and the black pawns always move downwards, but when they're capturing... The pawns, you know, capture on the diagonal. So I think the piece movement is pretty clear. There's a couple of differences that you have to pay attention to from ordinary chess. For example, um, there's this threefold repetition rule in ordinary chess, but we just we just get rid of this for infinite chess because, of course, threefold repetition is just a proxy for infinite play. The real rule is infinite play is a draw, not threefold repetition is a draw. That's just a kind of convenient approximation to the what I view as the actual rule, which is that infinite play is a draw. So the only way to win is to make checkmate on the board at a finite stage of play. And if you play infinitely, you haven't done that, and so it's a draw. And the pawns can be converted. And there's to no it. promotion because there's no edge, right? Exactly. And this position that we were just talking about is a position with game value omega, which means that because it has an ordinal value, white is going to win but black can play as though counting down from omega. What is the nature of counting down from omega? If you're black and you need to count down from omega, then you have to say a finite number. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's going to be at most that many numbers afterwards to count down, right? So the nature of counting down from omega is that you take this giant step on the first count 
And then after that, you subtract one each time. You can't subtract one from omega because that's not an ordinal. So if you come down from omega, you have to go to some finite number. And then if you just subtract one each time, then that's how many more moves you get. Mm -hmm. So that's the sense in which Black can make it take as long as he wants because he can pick his initial number to be whatever he wants. By the way, I, I just noticed that you're citing a math overflow question, which is really cool. That's right. Yeah, this my interest in infinite chess was born on math overflow because someone asked this question. Noam Elkies asked this question. That's so cool to see a math overflow citation in a, in an archive paper. That's cool. How do you construct the position right. that satisfies this? Is there an algorithm for construction? No. This is an act of mathematical creativity, really, to come up with. I had a co-author, my co-author Corey Evans. He's a national a U.S. national master chess player, mm -hmm. uh, very strong chess player. Um, he's also a, a philosophy professor of law. Your collaborations are wonderful. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I met him because he was a grad student at CUNY, where I was at the time in New York. And uh, also he was my son's chess coach for when my mm -hmm. son was playing chess competitively in elementary school. Mm -hmm. Then Corey was the coach. Um, and so we knew him that way. And... And that was right around the time when I was getting interested in infinite chess, and I knew I needed a chess knowledgeable mm -hmm. partner. And so Corey was invaluable uh, for the paper because the proofs in this chess, in infinite chess, are extremely finicky because you create these positions, but the details of the argument have to do with kind of chess reasoning, you know, like, and and my chess reading wasn't quite up to it uh, because I would create the positions. Uh, almost all the positions are ones that I made, but the but this is like after many generations mm -hmm. of being corrected by Corey because Corey would come and say, hey, you know, this pawn is hanging and it breaks your argument and, mm -hmm. or, you know, this bishop can leak out mm -hmm. of the cage or whatever. And, and so... Uh, and so the process was, uh, I knew kind of in terms of these ordinals, what we needed to create with mm -hmm. the position. And I would struggle to do it and create something that sort of had the features that I wanted. And then I would show it to Corey and he would say, look, it doesn't work because of this and that and so on. And so this kind of back and forth was extremely helpful to me. And eventually we you know, converged on arguments that were correct. Um, and uh, so it's yeah, it was quite interesting. Also, maybe another thing to say is that the follow-up paper to this one was a three-way paper with also Corey and myself and my PhD student, Norman Perlmutter, in which we improved the bounds. So we were aiming to produce more and more chess positions with higher and higher ordinal values. So the initial position was value omega, and then we made omega squared and omega cubed in the in the first paper. And then in this three-way co collaboration, we made omega to the fourth. The title of the paper is A Position in Infinite Chess with Game Value Omega to the Fourth. Right. And so at the time, this was the best known result, the sort of state of the art. But since that time, it's been improved now dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, uh, we know now that every countable ordinal arises as the game value of a position in infinite chess. So it's fantastic result.